Hi kids. Hello and welcome. We are back into our reading for unit one, Rites of Passage, talking about stepping stones on the path to growing up. Today we're going to be reading two stories, so please follow along as our narrator reads. You Are the Electric Boogaloo by Jeff Herbach. Letter. Background. Breakdancing, or breaking, is an athletic style of street dance that originated in New York City in the 1970s. Breakdancing has continued to grow in popularity and is now performed in many different countries. Meet the author. Jeff Herbach is the author of the series Stupid Fast and other works of literature for young adults. His books have won the 2011 Sybils Award for Best YA Novel and the Minnesota Book Award. He lives in a log cabin in Minnesota and teaches creative writing. You Are the Electric Boogaloo by Jeff Herbach. Dear teen me, humiliation and hilarity are closely linked, my little friend. Don't lie there in bed, your guts churning as you replay the terrible scene. I'm glad your shirt stuck to the floor. I love your breakdancing crew, okay? You and your friends from the rural Wisconsin hills have that K-Tell how-to album, including posters and diagrams. You pop, you worm, you spin on your backs, you windmill. In fact, you're not even that bad. I love your silver butterfly pants with 46 zippers that burst red fabric when you spin. Beautiful. I love it when you take your giant piece of cardboard, mobile dance floor, down to the corner of K Street at Highway 81 to dance for traffic. Maybe you're right. Maybe a talent scout will be driving between Stitzer and Hazel Green. Maybe you will be discovered. Keep at it. I love it that you have the guts to go into Kennedy Mall in Dubuque, Iowa to dance across from Hot Sam's Pretzels. You and your buddies go for broke in front of a small glum crowd who all eat Hot Sam's Pretzels and when security comes to escort you out, you scream, dancing is not a crime. I love that. I especially love what happened at Dubuque's Five Flags Center a few months later. You and your crew, break in fixation, challenged Dubuque's four plus one crew to a dance off. You practiced. You got t-shirts with your crew name emblazoned on them. You worked hard and you daydreamed harder. You imagined the roaring crowd lifting you onto their shoulders. You didn't expect the Five Flags floor to be so sticky. You didn't expect to sweat through your new shirt. You didn't expect the flesh of your back to be gripped and twisted so that it felt like it was on fire. You didn't expect it, but that's how it was. And it hurt so bad that instead of spitting into a windmill, the main part of your routine you just writhed on the floor howling. So, okay, sure, people laughed at you. And you know why? Because you looked really funny. Don't stay awake worrying about it, though. Don't wonder what you should have done differently. Don't beat yourself up, gut boiling with embarrassment. Don't imagine punching out the members of 4 Plus One. You can't blame them for wearing slick Adidas tracksuits that didn't grip the floor. Just go to sleep, kid and get ready for the next dance. It's all gonna be great, okay? How do I know? Because now, so many years later, you can barely remember your victories, although there were some. What you think about now are the high wire acts, the epic falls, and the punishing jeers of your classmates. You think about how excellent it is that you got up, dusted yourself off, and with utter seriousness of purpose, tried again. Your immense dorkiness as a teen will be the center of your artistic life, the center of your sense of humor, the center of ongoing friendships with so many of the kids you knew back then. You guys never discuss the relatively boring victories. You only talk about the grand, majestic, hilarious failures. What if you hit it big at that contest? Would you be a professional break dancer now? Would success have gone to your head? Or would you be a rich banker or a lawyer? Terrible. But instead, you stuck to that floor with your back on fire with the pain. 
and you screamed. Don't beat yourself up over it, okay? Just relax. Keep dancing by the highway, you splendid little dork. Just Be Yourself by Stephanie Pellegrin. Letter. Background. There is so much to learn and no way to tell what the future will hold. This author writes a reassuring letter to her younger self, saying that it will all work out in the end. Meet the author. Stephanie Pellegrin was in second grade when she wrote her first book. Pellegrin lives in Austin, Texas, and is involved with the Austin chapter of the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators. Just Be Yourself by Stephanie Pellegrin. Dear teen me, psst, hey, you in the corner of the library with your nose stuck in a book. Yes, you. Don't recognize me without that awful perm, do you? Remind me again why you thought that was a good idea. Anyway, I hope you don't mind if I sit with you for a minute, but we need to talk. Don't worry about the no talking in the library rule. I'm sure we'll be fine. Librarians aren't as bad as they seem. Judging from the hair and braces, I'd have to guess you're in your junior year. Yes? Thought so. I'd forgotten how many lonely lunch hours you spent in the school library. You have some friends in the cafeteria that you could sit with, but you don't feel like you really fit in, do you? That's why you joined every school club you could. I just counted, and you're in 18. Not to mention the numerous after-school activities you're involved in. I mean, honestly, you joined the ROTC. You don't even like ROTC. And I won't even bother bringing up that time you tried ballet. I'm still having nightmares about the fifth position. Let me ask you, how's it all working out? Not very well, am I right? By spending so much time trying to find yourself, you're slowly losing yourself. We don't all have one single rock star talent. And honestly, I think those of us who don't are the lucky ones. Life isn't about finding the one thing you're good at and never doing anything else. It's about exploring yourself and finding out who you really are on your own terms and in your own way. You don't have to exhaust yourself to do that. Oh, don't be so down in the dumps about it. You'll eventually find something you're good at, I promise. It's a long, winding road to get there, but you'll find it. Being able to spend all day doing what you love or one of the things that you love is the most amazing feeling in the world. And no, I won't tell you what it is, so don't even ask me. Just remember to always be yourself because there's nobody else who can do it for you. I think E.E. E. Cummings put it best when he said, it takes courage to grow up and become who you really are. Looks like the bell's about to ring, so I'll leave you to your book. What are you reading anyway? Oh, The Last Battle by C.S. Lewis. I should have guessed. You should give those Harry Potter books a try. I saw you roll your eyes. I know they seem like just another fad, but trust me, they're better than you think. They've got a real future.